What's going on everyone? Today I'm so excited to talk to you about WWDC 2024. And basically, Apple went out with a bang. This year, Apple outdone themselves with groundbreaking innovations that are set to transform the way we use technology. And here are the best features that I can't wait to try. First up, iOS 18 brings a whole new level of personalization and intelligence to your iPhone. With advanced AI-driven customization, your iPhone now adapts to your daily routines, suggested apps, and settings based on your habits. Plus, the new home screen widgets are more interactive and informative than ever before. And of course, for the Android users, we also will be able to put our apps anywhere in the home screen now. And you can change the colors to customize the icons. Yeah, Android already has this a long time ago. You can now change the two buttons in the front, the flashlight and the camera to whatever you want. You can finally hide apps as well and lock them. And you know, like for some people who wants to hide Tinder from their wives. So messages obviously is one of the best features on the iPhone. So iMessage will get tap backs now. So you get to create your own motion on your text so that it has more feelings, I guess, when you send it to your friends. You can also get scheduled text messages for those of you who forget greeting your wife for their birthday anniversary. And at the same time, we also get RCS support on the iPhone. Now, for those of you who loves hiking, you'll be able to create a trail now. So navigate using maps for your trail, which is really good. So it's kind of like all trails, but built into your iPhone. Another cool feature that I thought pretty useful for everyday life is tap cash. So I don't know if this is just a US thing, but hopefully this comes out on every iPhone in the world. So you'll be able to send money to your friends that you owe. For example, you went out on a restaurant and you needed like, you know, $20 to split the bill or whatever. You'll be able to send them $20 by tapping the phone. Now, in today's fast-paced world, staying powered up is crucial. Whether you're a traveler or a student or a professional, the Shargeek 170 Power Bank ensures that you never run out of battery. Its transparent design and prism silhouette makes it look like it's from the dark side of the moon. And Shargeek 170 combines a sleek, compact design with powerful performance. It's equipped with a massive 24,000 milliamp hour capacity. It can charge your smartphone, tablet, laptop, any MacBooks out there, and even your drone multiple times over and over throughout the day. With one USB-A and two USB-C ports, you can charge up to three devices simultaneously. Experience fast charging with 140 watts USB-C power delivery port capable of charging your MacBook Pros and other USB-C laptops on full speed. The intelligent LED display keeps you informed of the remaining battery life and charging status of your devices, so you're always on the know. Built for adventure, the Shar Geek 170 is perfect for camping trips, long trips, road trips, perfect while on the plane, and its durable construction ensures it can withstand the rigors of your journey. So what are you waiting for? Join the thousands of satisfied customers who trust Shargeek 170 Power Bank to keep their devices powered up wherever they go. Visit the website today and the link down in the description below and learn more on how to get yours. Stay charged and stay connected. <laughs>major upgrade. Say hello to FaceTime voice isolation, ensuring crystal clear calls no matter where you are. Next up, get ready for the future augmented reality with Apple Vision Pro. This AR headset offers an immersive experience like never before. It has stunning visuals and seamless integration with the Apple ecosystem. They updated the Photos app in the Vision OS so that you can create a spatial photo from the old photos that you have. So old photos can become spatial now. 
They also added this like hand gestures to bring up your apps and navigate control center as well. This is kind of similar with the Quest 3. So you don't have to touch your device when you want to bring up your apps. They also added this feature where you, you can make your screen bigger using your Vision OS with your MacBook. And you'll be able to have this panoramic supersized screen where you can have multiple windows in it. Now, another pretty cool thing, I think it's uh, useful because instead of just using your phone, because that's the only way to like shoot spatial video right now, they're going to create a new, maybe cheaper lens that has two cameras in it so that you can shoot spatial video that are more high quality. You'll be able to use this with Blackmagic, uh, Final Cut, Vimeo, and all sorts of different places where you can view your content. And then this little feature for uh, tvOS, you know, it's always forgotten, right? Uh, you just swipe down on the remote and you'll be able to see the actors. You don't have to go back and, you know, you can review it while you're watching the movie. In watchOS, we get a slightly different look here. And then there's the iPad OS 18, which gets all the features that the iPhone or the iOS 18 gets. But um, if you are an IT of your family and maybe you're away and you want to help your parents how to navigate through your iPad, to their iPads, you'll be able to remotely connect to their iPads now. Awesome. And then the biggest changes on the iPad OS and also is the uh, calculator. But nothing like the same as, you know, like the calculators that you know. This you'll be able to type up on Notes app. You can calculate a lot of things, even calculus. They also showed this photo of a person calculating angles and graphing out the equation from the drawing, which is really cool. You'll be able to see how they calculated it. And if you change numbers, it'll change the graph as well. And then we get Mac OS Sequoia. I actually guessed this name, um, you know, no credit to me, right? But uh, I had a feeling that they were going to use Sequoia. Basically, it adds this uh, snapping tool. You know, Windows already had this a long time ago. But you'll be able to snap Windows all around. You can also change background on Zoom or third-party apps. And they also added a new Passwords app, which is all around in iPad, iPhone, and even Vision OS. And the best feature, I think, Thing that they added here is the iPhone mirroring. I've been wanting this for so long because if you want to live stream and show a game from your phone, you won't be able to. You have to use a third-party app. Now you'll be able to do it and also navigate your iPhone in macOS. So you'll be able to drag and drop things, change, you know, control it and everything. Pretty cool. And last but not least, I think this is the best part that Apple made, which is the Apple intelligence. You'll be able to create and mod and proofread text from your essays or whatever project you're doing. There's a lot of integrated Apple intelligence in all devices, which is really cool. They have this cleanup tool that you can take off people, uh, certain things in the picture that you don't want. They also have a Gen Moji which you can create your own emojis, which is awesome. And a lot more Apple intelligence features that are, you know, I think it's kind of gimmicky, but it is pretty useful on some people, for some people, right? So I'm not going to just disregard it. I will do a full-on review once it does come out. Uh, I think they say on the fall. Now, the other thing that they basically revamp is Siri. So you get this a new look for Siri. You, it also will be able to control your phone using only the voice. And for those of you who are wondering if there's like a privacy leak, you know, like Elon Musk was saying, oh, you... Uh, this is a privacy leak out of Apple's, you know, using iPhone. So I won't let my workers use iPhones anymore. Apple basically answered this. Basically, if Siri is able to do it, 80 to 90% of the time, it'll be able to do it. Then it doesn't need to upload in the cloud. So you'll be able to do it within your device only. But there are times that ChatGPT is needed. It will give you a prompt if you want to enable chat GPT. So you have to say yes uh, to the prompt or else you won't use it. Also, you won't need an account to use chat GPT. Now, thanks for watching everyone. Let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite feature of the WWDC 2024? And if you have any questions, please comment down below. So I'll be able to answer that as well. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.